Listen and practice. It is raining. The sky is gray. Carla goes to the market. She looks at the umbrellas. She likes a red umbrella. It's very smart. It costs ten dollars. Carla is a student. She doesn't have much money. I can give you seven dollars for that umbrella. Okay, young lady. This is your lucky day. Give me seven dollars. The umbrella is yours. This is my lucky day, says Carla. She holds the red umbrella above her head. The rain falls on the umbrella. Carla goes to a cake shop. She wants to buy some cakes. Her little brother loves cakes. She goes into the shop. She leaves her red umbrella near the door. It is quiet inside the shop. Carla chooses three small cakes. She talks to the shop assistant. A customer is leaving the shop. She is a young woman. She is holding a cake box. Carla is going to leave the shop. But where is her umbrella? There is one umbrella near the door. It is not a red umbrella. It is not Carla's umbrella. This umbrella is old and black. It has a pattern of yellow ducks. It is not smart. Carla takes the umbrella. This is not my lucky day. Carla walks to the town square. A young man speaks to her. Hello. He smiles. Carla does not know this young man. She walks away quickly. The young man is following Carla. She walks into a crowd of people. The young man follows the black and yellow umbrella. Hello. Wait. Carla turns. She looks at the young man. She is angry. Go away, she says. The young man is sad. Marissa, I'm sorry, he says. I'm very late. I'm not Marissa. Carla shouts. You are not Marissa, says the young man. He points at the black umbrella with yellow ducks. That's her umbrella. Oh, says Carla. Who is Marissa? I don't know Marissa, says the young man. I'm going to meet her. We are going to have coffee. It is my cousin's idea. Marissa works with my cousin. I am not Marissa, says Carla again. My cousin has a photo of Marissa, says the young man. She's tall. You're tall. Her hair is short and dark. Your hair is short and dark. In the photo, she has an umbrella. It's a black umbrella with yellow ducks. 
You have a black umbrella with yellow ducks. Carla looks up at the old umbrella. Marissa is a thief, she thinks. She has my new red umbrella. Carla is angry again. Please don't be angry, says the young man. He looks at his watch. It's three o'clock. Marissa goes to work at 2.30. I can't meet her now. It's too late. He smiles at Carla. Let's have coffee together, he says. Carla thinks for a moment. Okay, she says. Let's go to my aunt's cafe. The young man smiles again. That will be great, he says. My name is Paul. I'm a law student third year. I'm Carla. I'm a student too. I'm studying science. Carla sits in the cafe with Paul. They drink coffee. They talk. They laugh. They laugh and talk. Suddenly, Carla jumps up. Oh, no, she says. It's late. I must go home. I must study. I'm going to have an exam tomorrow. Good luck. Will you meet me again? Yes. That will be nice. It is almost dark. The town square is quiet. Carla sees a tall young woman. The young woman has short dark hair. She has a smart umbrella. It is a red umbrella. The young woman is Marissa. Marissa sees the old black umbrella with yellow ducks. She is worried. Suddenly, her face is red. Don't worry, says Carla. Keep my red umbrella. I like this umbrella. It's a lucky umbrella. This is my lucky day. The rain falls on the umbrellas. Carla smiles. Then she runs home. The elves and the shoemaker. There was once a shoemaker who worked very hard and was very honest, but still he could not earn enough to live upon, and at last all he had in the world was gone, save just leather enough to make one pair of shoes. Then he cut his leather out, all ready to make up the next day, meaning to rise early in the morning to his work. His conscience was clear and his heart light amidst all his troubles, so he went peaceably to bed, left all his cares to heaven, and soon fell asleep. In the morning, after he had said his prayers, he sat himself down to his work, when, to his great wonder, there stood the shoes already made upon the table. The good man knew not what to say or think it such an odd thing happening. He looked at the workmanship. There was not one false stitch in the whole job. All was so neat and true that it was quite a masterpiece. The same day a customer came in, and the shoes suited him so well that he willingly paid a price higher than usual for them, 
and the poor shoemaker, with the money, bought leather enough to make two pairs more. In the evening he cut out the work and went to bed early, that he might get up and begin betimes next day. But he was saved all the trouble, for when he got up in the morning, the work was done ready to his hand. Soon in came buyers, who paid him handsomely for his goods, so that he bought leather enough for four pair more. He cut out the work again overnight, and found it done in the morning, as before, and so it went on for some time. What was got ready in the evening was always done by daybreak, and the good man soon became thriving and well off again. One evening, about Christmas time, as he and his wife were sitting over the fire chatting together, He said to her, I should like to sit up and watch tonight that we may see who it is that comes and does my work for me. The wife liked the thought. So they left a light burning and hid themselves in a corner of the room behind a curtain that was hung up there and watched what would happen. As soon as it was midnight, there came in two little naked dwarfs, and they sat themselves upon the shoemaker's bench, took up all the work that was cut out, and began to ply with their little fingers, stitching and wrapping and tapping away at such a rate that the shoemaker was all wonder and could not take his eyes off them. And on they went, till the job was quite done, and the shoes stood ready for use upon the table. This was long before daybreak, and then they bustled away, as quick as lightning. The next day the wife said to the shoemaker, these little whites have made us rich, and we ought to be thankful to them, and do them a good turn, if we can. I am quite sorry to see them run about as they do, and indeed it is not very decent, for they have nothing upon their backs to keep off the cold. I'll tell you what. I will make each of them a shirt, and a coat and waistcoat, and a pair of pantaloons into the bargain. And do you make each of them a little pair of shoes? The thought pleased the good cobbler very much. And one evening, when all the things were ready, they laid them on the table instead of the work that they used to cut out, and then went and hid themselves to watch what the little elves would do. About midnight and they came, dancing and skipping, hopped round the room, and then went to sit down to their work as usual. But when they saw the clothes lying for them, they laughed and chuckled, and seemed mightily delighted. Then they dressed themselves in the twinkling of an eye, and danced and capered and sprang about, as merry as could be, till at last they danced out at the door and away over the green. The good couple saw them no more, but everything went well with them, from that time forward, as long as they lived.